came across a quote in the skateboarding community and it was very like, don't do what's safe, just do what will get it done. I'm kind of enjoying breaking through like mental barriers of fear when I'm skating. So I think I can apply that to life. I can apply that to trading. This weekend I'm heading to Manila. So the time of watching this, I'll be in Manila. And it's just been a really weird trading week for me so far. Like just to document, right? I'm literally two losses in. So it's been one of those times where it's just not the most fun time to trade you know we're getting volatility in the markets but just for being in the markets long enough like volatility won't always mean opportunity it, yeah the market's moving in one direction but if there's no trade from your plan you're good you're better off just doing something that you enjoy that you love that you're being pushed you're growing because look you got to stay focused because the moments the weeks the periods where the market's in your favor, let's say. That's when you want to capitalize. That's when you want to stay focused. I do want to go over uh, a loss. So I'll share that in this video. So everything has the meaning you give it. <clears throat> this is so powerful. We're just getting deeper into the rabbit hole here. If we were just to take the scenario, if price pushed up and three people took a loss, chances are each of them will take a different meaning from that loss. Person one might be like, Oh no, not another loss. I'm down even more on my account. I suck at trading. Person two might be like, okay, I stuck to my plan. It's okay. Losses are a cost of business. Person three might be like, you know, I wasn't sure, but just wanted to go for this trade. When will I ever learn from my mistakes? So again, the fact is they took a loss, but then the meaning, the meaning that they attach to this loss differentiates between each person. Super interesting, right? So it's safe to say that each belief is likely to produce a different reality in different people because of the meaning you have given it. Ooh, it's hot. Awesome. Hey guys, this is my Kiwi dollar short loss that I took on Tuesday. Same time I took my EU loss, which those who follow me on Instagram know about. If you are not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me. Make sure you're following the correct one. Be aware of scammers. All right, so on the four hour, let's have a look. What's happening so far? Well, we've been pushing down and then we ended up breaking to the upside. So safe to say we came from bearish market structure to then once we've broken up here to then bullish market structure. But what I'm looking at is that this is still a pullback Price kind of hesitated and came back into this side of price. If we look on the daily, actually, we'll see this much more clearly. The daily range, I would say, is from here to here, and that we're in an area that price can still come to this, the most extreme side of discount. But again, this can take some time if price decides to, I don't know, push up before it goes. Uh, but yeah, this is what is going on on the high time frame standpoint. So understanding that this could be a level or an opportunity for price to come in short so i had this area marked out um, and i understood that if price you know even if it did a little flick down and continued to then maybe these areas then that's all good sometimes it just be like that right but for me understanding this made sense and it was in my plan so let's drill down to the 15 minute so it was quite nice. I liked seeing price kind of just correctively push into this four hour AOI. For me, then that was screaming that, okay, if my entry model presents itself, I will take it. So again, all this liquidity, understanding, okay, there is this bigger low here and understanding that there is some reason for price to come back uh, and fill, let's say, these fair value gaps. You've even got order blocks. Um, so yeah, oopsie, I lost price. But hey, look, this is kind of what happened, right? We had this break of market structure, price pulled up. I was looking at kind of these rejection wicks and seeing that, okay, cheeky little sweeper over here, big old rejection candle push down. And what happened next was I set my entry after we got this retrace candle 
does the time bother me? Because again, it's not exactly London open kill zone, is it? But looking at it, that it's Asian session, Kiwi dollar, makes sense, right? So that was okay for me. So I took this with a six pip stop loss, understood that if it goes any higher, it's pretty much not gonna be respecting this AOI and it'll probably end up creeping higher. So it is what it is at this point. Understanding that, okay, 2%, okay, that's still within, let's say this part. So what happens next is price goes down a little bit, starts teasing this low, whoops. And then pretty much very quickly reverses going into pre New York open. So yeah, 1% loss here. You can see as price just didn't respect this, then it will just end up continuing to other areas such as going up towards here. And you can see price taps into it very slightly. Then we had, I think that was CPI news. Yeah, we had CPI on the Wednesday. So I own an iPad and I never knew what to use it for until I started to make use of it and use it for note taking or let's say reading a book and highlighting and all that kind of stuff. But basically what I want to say is I've just been really studying mindset again. I think I've been going through seasons and rhythms of just being so like into studying and then I'll be in like an action taking mode but it's something that I want to actually keep as a consistent thing just to stay as a student and keep learning and keep studying mindset, psychology, behavior, language, faith, like anything, right? I just really wanna stretch my mindset. And again, just going back to the whole idea that I always talk about in this video is capacity, just increasing my capacity. Shout out to David Goggins because last month in March, I really like studied and, and wanted to soak in and ponder on everything that was spoken about in the David Goggins and Andrew Huberman uh, podcast and he literally said how he's so known for being the hardest man on earth yet yeah he does his workouts and his stretching but literally the rest of his time he spent on learning studying so I was literally like this I'll take this as a sign to continue back on studying and making it more of a consistent thing in my life we were talking about learning right right now you're spending some time learning and doing things that I think most people probably don't typically associate David Goggins with. Right. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, most people just look at me as the guy that runs and yells as he's running. And that's, uh, while I do that, you know, to motivate people, but people don't understand that my day is broken up into segments. I work out, I eat, I sleep, but I spend most of my time studying. made it and just like that i am in manila gotta make sure i lock it every time i like solo travel i always i'm so extra about like did i lock the door stuff like that but look guys i'm in manila exactly to be exact in bgc and i'm very excited to be here because of I'm gonna make you guys wait for the next video because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. But yeah, I drove here, took about two and a half hours. Apart from getting coffee, gonna get a cheeky gym workout. Guys, I've missed the gym so badly. Like in the province, you just don't get good gyms, but I'm excited to get um, a workout in. But coffee, gym, and I've got ASR to do. I've got a lot of ASR to do actually. I feel like I'm a little bit behind, but we're gonna have fun. Balance is key. Um, I truly believe that life, work, everything is just in one stream. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, God bless.